if you're watching this, you're probably a pharmacy student or looking to go into pharmacy school and you're trying to ask yourself, what GPA is really necessary for pharmacy school? In this video, we talk exactly about that and why you shouldn't even care about things like GPA. Don't believe me? Watch this video, find out. What's going on? It's your boy, Kevin Yee, the PharmD. And today I'm actually going to be answering pharmacy questions. It's kind of cool that people still ask me pharmacy questions, even though I don't practice. And today I just decided to kind of really focus on kind of the pharmacy students that follow me and who have questions about getting into pharmacy school. And one of the most common questions I get is, hey, what degree or what GPA is necessary for pharmacy? Today, I'm going to be focusing on the GPA part. You want to know the short answer? It's 3.0 to 4.0, um, usually across the board. Those are the metrics for, that's what USC looks for. Uh, a lot of different programs that I used to apply to look for that. I just recently checked it online. A lot of the schools actually look for that GPA. But the truth is you shouldn't even care about GPA. And maybe if you hear this number of 3.0 to 4.0, you're like, shit. Maybe the problem is you don't have this GPA. Or maybe the problem is, is that oh, everyone else has a similar GPA to me. How do I really stand out? And so today I'm going to give you three tips on how to kind of stand out for pharmacy school and really remind you, stop focusing on GPA so much, because if you focus on GPA, you're basically just commoditizing yourself. You're basically commoditizing yourself if you're just going in for was comparing your GPA. So I'm going to go step by step of my most favorite ways to kind of tackle the GPA problem. And in this video, I'm going to go down the list of my starting with my least favorite to my most favorite that will almost guarantee you results, right? But I want you to watch this whole video in its entirety because you need to know every single thing that I'm going to be talking about today. So tip number one, apply to more schools. You guys got to realize that the market for pharmacy schools are is getting more and more saturated there's a lot of schools that have opened up recently due to i think 2006 initial demand there's only two reasons why you want to go to pharmacy school one you want to make sure it's accredited and two you want to make sure that it stays accredited so by the time you sit on your board so you don't end up with any sort of weird uh situation right accreditation is super super important before you yell at me or before you're like, oh, Kevin, your advice sucks. I really kind of want you to understand the current job market and how the current schools, what the current schools are doing in pharmacy. So I actually pulled some uh, stats from U.S. Bureau of Labor and some of the and American Association Colleges of Pharmacy. And I kind of want to read some of these uh, statistics with you. So according to the American College of Pharmacy, uh, they're saying that as of 2017, there's 142 colleges with a PharmD program. In 2016 to 17, there was 14,502 first professional degrees in pharmacy that were rewarded. That basically tells you that there was over 14,000 students that graduated uh, during that year. Okay. So that is kind of like, how many schools there are the current competition for pharmacy schools. And let me give you some stats of the Bureau of Labor really quick. When I checked the Bureau of Labor and kind of looked at the job output, it says employment of pharmacists is projected to grow 6% from 2016 to 2026, about as fast as the average for all occupations. Currently, there's about 312 500 jobs for pharmacy as of 2016. By 2026, that's expected to increase by 6%, meaning there's only going to be 17,000 more jobs for this market unless things drastically change. And with things like automation and whatnot, you can definitely expect this number to be decreasing, right? So my question to you, is this going to catch up? You bet a lot of pharmacy schools will be very willing to get pharmacy students in. Why? Because the job market is getting more and more saturated every single day. And that's why I feel so compelled to really advise people not to go in pharmacy unless they truly love the profession, 
right? Because there's a lot of unhappy pharmacists. And that's why I try to show and try to get free up the job market through entrepreneurship and helping ph get pharmacists out of their traditional roles. And know it's really funny, this letter that I got from a pharmacy school pitching me on a PharmD really kind of tells you about the crisis that the schools are going to have for pharmacy schools, right? And so I'm going to leave this school anonymous, but basically they're like XYZ University of Health Sciences is excited to announce the start of its inaugural first co cohort of the doctor of pharmacy degree in 2019. This is an accelerated doctorate of pharmacy program that will take the successful student only three years to complete and enter a job market. Some advantages are uh, blah, 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 blah. Keep in mind, I'm already a PharmD. I don't know where, where they got my name to even pitch me this, but it's pretty damn funny. But what is definitely going to happen is that there's going to be more students who aren't finding jobs, who can't get careers. Less people are just going to apply to a pharmacy school. You know, it's just supply and demand unless unless current things change with legislation and our scope of practice kind of increases. It's not looking too good for us pharmacists. So if you still want to go to pharmacy school, just apply to more schools and I, I guarantee you'll get into one school, one pharmacy school. It might not be the location that you want, but it's important to keep in mind. So tip number two this one is really geared toward people who have a really shitty gpa maybe your gpa isn't doing too hot and the obvious answer is boost your gpa Duh. so i know that's really basic but here are some ways that you can actually boost your gpa first you can go to a community college and take some of the prereqs if you don't know how to look up prereqs go to farmcast and um they literally have like a lot of schools will list out their prereqs there or go on the school website or pharmacy they will list out their prereqs there but a lot of people don't know that you can actually take a lot of your prereqs at a community college obviously talk to the mission board of the school of your choice uh just to confirm but that's how i did mine and obviously for me community college was really really freaking easy i just did one psychology course and one english course and having that 4.0 really really helped my gpa but i didn't even really look at my gpa my gpa was a 3.2 or 3.4 going into pharmacy school um but a more practical cut you can also do something very similar where you go to grad school or get a master's or something like that obviously if you come from a family of a lot of wealth or if you want to make more money that's really great you can do that Maybe do your MBA or something like that. That works too. But if you want a quicker way, quicker, cheaper way, there's three books I really recommend for kind of optimizing your study habits and getting more done. One of the recent books I met, I read was Getting Things Done by David Allen. Really, really great book. I found him through, uh, I've actually had this book for a long time. Just never read it. I know Joe uh, from JK Films. He actually read this book. He actually had this book too. Um, but I actually found them through London Real. And man, it's really changed my life. Like I, I literally have a physical folder. So I have like different project folders and stuff like that. And uh, literally every single day I, I write down all my ideas and just file it. It's really, really cool. So highly recommend this book. Uh, some other books that really changed my life is Cal Newport. He has a really, he had a really great blog. I'm not sure if it's still active, but it's called Study Hacks. Really great kind of um uh one of the really great guides was how to win at college surprising secrets for students from the country's top students so this really kind of analyzed he basically talked to a lot of different students and see what their working habits were and looked at the commonalities i guarantee you you'll you'll love this book also how to become a straight a student by also cal newport and it's more of a guide i really like love this book if you can't tell this is the exact copy that i had in college i bought it off his blog back in the day but they're available on amazon if you want to support my channel buy through my affiliate links in the link below so that's tip number two really improve your gpa the third tip is my favorite before i go into my favorite comment make sure to like comment subscribe to my channel and make sure to hit the bell button so you can get all the tips on pharmacy school and it's go through the back door or the third door, right? It's like this analogy, right? 
So imagine if you're at a club, you try to go through the front door. And what do you do if you go through the front door? Everybody is waiting in line for the club, right? You can spend a lot of time looking like waiting like everyone else. You're being commoditized. And how that relates to kind of your GPA is that if you go through the front door a lot of time through applications, you're commoditizing yourself. You're com you're being compared with your GPA with everything else. But imagine like a club, if you knew someone, a homie, you got the homie hookup. They're like, hey, Kevin, come to the back. We'll let you in. Maybe it's a club promoter. Maybe it's the owner of the club. You know, they will let you go through the back door and you don't commoditize yourself like the, all the other people, right? So how does that translate into kind of GPA and all that? It really goes to creating relationships. You want to create such deep relationships where, you know, submitting an application is just a formality, right? And this happens not only with, with a pharmacy school, applying pharmacy school, but it happens with residency. It actually happens with even getting a job. It's one of the things that I love doing the most and I think is underrated. And I want everyone in the world to know this, this secret, right? I learned it from Ramit Sethi, by the way, huge props to him. So how do you do this? Well, first of all, I would introduce yourself to different professors before you need something, right? Maybe it's at a professor at a local pharmacy school or the, your dream pharmacy school. Reach out to them, see what their tips are. Kind of plant the seed before you actually need it. So if you're in, if you're a freshman and you're considering pharmacy school, maybe by year four or year three, plant those seeds early. Kind of reach out to different pharmacy schools that are nearby you and or even far away and just email someone and just tell them that, Hey, I'm interested in farm school. I would love to find ways to help you. And I would love kind of your tips of getting into farm school. If you're open to it, you know, a lot of people will say, no, they're busy, but most cases, a lot of professors are very willing to just help you. So, uh, I think that is the secret. You want to talk to them. Not when you're scrambling, when you need something, talk to them before you need something. Right. Second thing is really offer them to help them with shit in exchange just to chat or just to have a, a meeting cadence of how to help, like how to position you for pharmacy school. A lot of the time, what you're looking for is not only just a, a homey hookup, like with a professor, but you're looking for a true mentorship, right? So maybe you're just like, Hey, I don't know if I should take this job and whatnot. They can advise you and you guys can meet on weekly on like a quarterly cadence, right? Or meet every quarter. Um, Third thing is really do cool shit and let them know, man, because the truth is by the time you get, um, by the time you get into pharmacy school, you're going to need recommendations. You're going to need recommendations for residency. You're going to need a lot of different things. So you want things to be a long-term relationship, you know, anyways, that is my advice for, um, the whole GPA type of topic when it comes to applying to pharmacy school. If you guys have big pharmacy questions, leave them below tell me about your biggest struggles applying to pharmacy school what do you want to know about and i really have to bring this up because i want to do you guys really really want to do pharmacy in general if you're deciding whether you should do pharmacy or not make sure to check out my playlist i'll leave it somewhere around here and make sure you check out my my video playlist of should i do pharmacy or not because i will play devil's advocate and i'll be like hey don't do pharmacy here's why and if you feel still compelled to do pharmacy after watching those videos, then it's probably for you. All right. Anyways, guys, check that out. I will see you guys later. Take care. Peace, mother people. Bye.